Well, it is the night before we are getting ready to head out. And I wanted to get a little bit of a head start on a few things here on the coach. So in the morning, we're doing predominantly the rest of the packing up. But tonight, we're going to go ahead and do our black tank dump, make sure our gray tanks are completely empty, uh, put a little bit of water on for travel. Um, and we're going to go ahead and get the garage packed up because that's the wild card. This is our not our first time, but it's our first time since a lot of the modifications really packing up that space. So let's get some outside stuff done, get some water put on, flush some black tanks and and all of that good stuff and then we'll go inside and do the great tanks before we get ready to hit the road in the morning also it's friday so wear a red shirt all right well while that does its thing we're gonna pop inside and go ahead and get some of the garage space all squared away and packed up. All right, so what all do we need to do to pack up the garage space? Well, and this is me just going slow through our routines. If you're doing this, remember, speed is your enemy. So go slow, do it right. So we have the desk. You can see my computer bag sitting here um, and camera bag. So when we drive, I don't actually take that in the truck with me. It's a little too much with the dogs and everything else. So. Uh, I pull the camera equipment I'm going to use, like the camera I'm shooting on, our GoPros, anything we use to mount cameras in places. I take that out, um, and I just put it in the truck raw, kind of like this, so I'll carry the camera around with me. Um, the rest of it, the computer's in the bag, the monitor has to be put in the position, and so on and so forth. The chair gets moved and tied down. Uh, I already did this earlier, but the, the glass doors are supposed to be dropped, that way they can't jump and drop on accident. So those are all down, that's locked, and then we got the candy cane lock right there, engaged um, on the three season doors. We need to put a few anchors down into the L-Track to hold the chair and then the ottoman in place. And then we need to clean up the dog's water, clean that area up. Uh, we just empty it and then we throw it on the dog bed and it kind of stays here. And then last but not least, the washer. So we elected not to drill it down because I didn't want to. So just to kind of keep it semi-stabilized, there's actually a hook on the L-Track in the middle underneath it, and it's anchored to, and then we have one behind, and then we'll actually pull another one forward. So not super tight, because it's not, it's you can it's plastic. You can push on it and move it, but just enough to kind of hold it in its position while we're traveling. So uh, that's what we're gonna do. Everything else, the dog leashes will come with us. This stays on the wall, and we're hoping all this will just stay right here. That's the mission. That's the mission slash goal. So, Let's uh, get to doing some stuff, I guess. Okay, so you can see the monitor just kind of flattens like that. And then I take one of the pillows from the couch in the living room and some bungee cords and that'll hold down. Uh, this part will come right to the top there, but not quite touch it. Uh, and so that works out nicely. Now, if we ever had to bring the bed down though, I would have to take this arm off, which I can also do. So there they are in the up position. Those kind of still stay like that, but that's in the up position now. So that's not going anywhere. The only other thing I will do most of these will stay put, but we're going to turn them off. And then this one likes to come out. So we're going to leave everything else plugged in. And then this is the main to everything. I actually go ahead and unplug that. So this is pretty much it. Again, everything there stays the same. The leashes will come with us in the truck because that's where the dogs will be. Uh, the whiteboard stays there. The office gets elevated and secured. There's nothing on that side coming down. The bag will actually go on the couch while we're in transit. The chair and the ottoman are bungeed down. And then on this side, I do. So if we're going somewhere short and I'm not worried about it, I don't do this. Um, normally that stuff doesn't move, but that's a really full thing of dog food and I don't want it rolling into the glass. So, and the fact that we're driving for multiple days. So I did go ahead and put a bungee over that. And then the dog bed, I just throw all the rest of the dog stuff on it. Again, the chances of that moving is pretty small, but I have to tie down, so why not? So I went ahead and strapped those down. Plus, it just gives me peace of mind back here. Stuff's not flying around. Um, the other thing it does too is if we need to come back here for any reason, we can still sit in that chair. We can still access that bathroom for transit. The door can open freely. The only thing I haven't done yet besides my bag uh, is take the strap. So this strap just lives here, and that is has one of these ends on it, essentially, where it's clipped to the anchor. This anchor comes off, it'll go in the ground right in front of it, 
and then the strap will go through the ratchet on that side and we'll have side to side and forward backward stabilization for that. But I'm gonna wait on that because Lauren uh, is riding right now. When we go away for a long period of time, she likes to get as many rides in with Stella as possible. So she's doing that and when she comes back, we'll throw her dirty clothes in there just for transit. That's kind of our hamper too. Um, Cause we'll have two or three days worth of transit clothes that we'll change in and out of. Uh, that'll kind of go up in the front. So we try to minimize that. So as soon as she gets back, throws that in there. Um, I will go ahead and put the strap over the top and then out here we'll be done. And apparently I need to turn the TV off. I'm not sure why that's on. Everything up in the attic space or the bunk is secure. We leave that in a secure position to where we feel confident traveling down the road like that. So we're pretty much hurry wait till Lauren gets here. So uh, we'll see what there's anything that changes. Otherwise we'll see in the morning because we're getting out of here. Let's go to Tennessee. Welcome back. Mm -hmm. We're getting to leave. <laughs> Finally, our first trip in the new rig. <laughs> we are very, very excited. But before mm -hmm. we get to head towards... If you tuned into the live, you know we're at least going to Tennessee. Yeah. Um, we have to pack. Yes, we do. And we have to figure out how to pack. Yep. This is our very first time once fully oh. loaded. Hi, Mishka. We're excited. Uh, this is our very first time mm -hmm. getting everything in a travel position. Now we have mm -hmm. ideas. Right. But... Uh, yeah, we got to figure some stuff out here. <laughs> and so. Mishka is ready to go. She's excited. Are you excited? Say, I'm excited. Let, let's pack up and hit the road. So there is one massive travel day uh, thing that we absolutely have to do, and that's coffee. Uh, thanks to Alliance RV for our nice little coffee mugs. They make perfect to go little keeper warmers and travel. So coffee is brewed. So now we're actually going to get to going uh, as far as packing up. All right, he's got everything secured back here. And he also went ahead and pulled up the shades because we always like to travel with those up. So the last thing I really need to do in here, not a whole lot, is just turn the AC off and then we'll move on to the living room. Go, let's go. All right, securing this doesn't need a whole lot of securing, which is our favorite. But if you remember, Pillows have uses on travel days. You saw one yesterday, and this one's going back in the microwave just like it did in the solitude. And if you're wondering, crazy lady, why are you putting pillows in the microwave? It's so that that glass tray that rotates at the bottom doesn't bounce and shatter because we may have experience in that department. May? <laughs> glass shards everywhere. Everywhere. But otherwise, this is pretty well set to go. No, we don't need to do much here. And then over here, he's already secured the TV. I don't think he trusts me to do that with his baby here. Most of this is actually secured down with museum putty, except for this. So, all right, this, my plant. We don't like to travel bouncing plants. And then, so I just start putting everything kind of over in this area so that I know to put it away and just kind of work this way. So back over here, last thing is to crawl under the table and secure the chairs. <laughs> so the rig came with those like snap in straps that go around the chairs. Um, and then we bought a pack of bungee cords just to help with out there. And they came with those little teeny weeny ones. Those seem to do just as good of a job that coupled with our independent suspension and the chairs haven't moved yet. Also Lauren's being fuzzed. They're very excited to go. They, yes, it's they been are. a while and they get this way. And so, oh boy. Okay. Are you excited? <laughs> All right. Whenever we are organizing the cabinets, most of the stuff is in like a basket or secured some way that we don't have to do much for it for travel days. So the only things left to do in here are to pull up the shades and turn the AC off. This is the fun part. Hey. Some of them fly up faster than they should. <laughs> Some of them don't fly. So why do we pull the shades up? For travel day, because we don't want them to break or break windows, right? And? I don't know. Oh, you want to see in. Yeah. Yeah. All right. And now we're into the kitchen. I need to grab this off of the fridge so it doesn't scratch the fridge while we're moving. And then everything else just kind of gets tucked away. Some version of here or in that cabinet above the fridge. We left a little bit of room over there for it. So. Easy like easy. the entire thing? <laughs> like the entire thing. We had a lot more room than we expected to. Yes, it worked out really nicely. So that's what we're going to do. And then we'll move up to the bathroom. All right, into the bathroom. 
we're going to remember this time because we haven't so far yet. Every trip we've taken, we've kind of forgotten to do this part. That's okay. That's what I'm here for. And when I say we, it was because the first two trips were him by himself. So he yep. kind of had a tall order on that. But anyways, it survived just fine and we're happy for that. Okay. So just put everything into this basket and then we'll put that on the floor and it travels really well. And several of these things we didn't secure to the counter. This one, for obvious reasons, it's a dehumidifier. We need to be able to take it off and empty it. The Kleenexes, because again, you go through those. But my sunrise alarm clock that Ryan still despises and I still love. That one got secured down. It's not oh. going anywhere. In here, there's not a whole lot to secure, thank goodness. So we already pulled the shades up. The biggest thing is making sure we secure these glass doors so they don't bounce around. Oh, I just thought of something. I'm so glad we don't have the glass shower doors right now. That's such a relief. Anyways, yes. So we are going to secure those down and then that about wraps this up. While Lauren's been doing all that, I actually pulled the gray tank handles one last time just to get her shower water out and any last little bit of gray water we have on board. Uh, that normally takes just a second. So I kind of let that happen. Um, typically, if I wasn't filming Lauren doing all this, I would be also outside doing all of our stuff. Um, but because we're filming it, we're just kind of doing it together. And then obviously one of us is holding the camera. All right. The last thing I do, and I'm telling you up here instead of down there because I will have helpers, um, is we actually take a damp rag and physically clean under the slide flaps to make sure nothing's stuck under there. That lets us visualize to make sure there's nothing there and it keeps it nice and clean because believe it or not, these guys are kind of gross and hairy. So again, because we're filming this, it's a little bit not happening kind of the way it normally would. Typically, I'd be outside doing stuff while Lauren's in here doing this. Um, so what's about to happen for us is typically at some point we would try to take the dogs outside and do just get all their energy out. Because <laughs> we have about a 10-ish hour drive day today, depending on traffic. So they will be stuck in the truck all day minus, you know, gas stops and pit stops for them and lunches and all that good stuff. So uh, what we're going to do now is when Lauren's done doing that, I'm going to start outside and she's actually going to take the pups down to the park, let them play for a little bit, go to the bathroom, all that good stuff. And then hopefully about that same time, be ready to actually hook up to the truck. All right. Well, it is uh, chillier this morning. We had a cold front come through last night and it's awesome. So uh, we are outside now. So we're going to go through a lot of our kind of tear down stuff for outside and securing everything so that we can be ready to hook up and head towards Tennessee. Okay, well that is our Starlink bin. So one of the first things I do because it's one of the more unnecessary things is we're gonna take down our Starlink. Now we do have the suction cup mounts from uh, Flagpole Buddy. Those do come off as well. It gives me an opportunity to clean underneath them uh, and it's just good to take those off of the skin of the RV every once in a while. Uh, so those will come off and everything will get stored into this bin. So that is how we store our Starlink. That also wraps up this bay. So we'll go ahead and shut this down. And that's it on that side. So now we go back to the service side and knock out a bunch of other stuff. Also, because Lauren took the dogs down to the park, I went ahead and started the truck, get it actually warmed up in this scenario, sometimes cooled off. Plus, before you have a long tow day, it's good to warm up a diesel engine. It's a little cooler outside today and the truck's not as used to that. So we went ahead and fired it up, let it kind of get, you know what gloves mean. So the water's done. I try to do the water first because that's our drinking water and the thought of touching the sewer hose even with gloves on and then touching our fresh water. Not all that appealing, not gonna lie. So uh, we, Starlink is put away like you already saw. We have the fresh water put away and now it's time for the fun part, the part that Lauren actively avoids. Um, one thing that I've already done too is a few days ago we had a storm roll through and so for added weight during some wind some high wind stuff i went ahead and put our travel water on this is typically when i would be doing that or possibly the night before um, depending on how far we're going and our need uh, we're not full on boondocking well we are for one night um, so i've only put on about 15 gallons because that's more than enough because of the shape of tanks they're squares water settles on one side more than the other and you never know where your inlet is so really the first five to ten gallons are just to get to that water line to where the pump will actually suck water and not just air. So, sewer time. Uh, so, can't stress this enough. Start from this side. If you don't have one of these Valterra, ooh. if you don't have one of these add-on Valterra valves, do that. It prevents anything residual coming down and then on your hands when you go to hook up. Uh, plus it allows one more protection when you're unhooking. So, 
that's already engaged as well as all the other. So make sure all your tanks are closed before you do this. And then it's a simple unhook. And then leave this side elevated and lock it all the way in. I use this opportunity to go ahead and do this. There's no reason not to. Okay. All right. So we have converted. This is where a trash can would go, and then there's a drop down in the kitchen. I've converted this, and I don't think I've actually shown anybody what's in here. So stick your head in there, Lauren. So our our extension line, in case we ever need it, it's over there in the corner. And then I use some of those kind of Home Depot twisty ties to keep those nice and tight and together. And then this is my little Home Depot bucket. So that's what I use for flushing stuff or just, you never know when you need a good bucket. So, uh, but that's also where our electrical cord goes and our surge protector. So let's head on back here. So number one rule, always flip your breaker first. So now we've peeled power to the coach. I'll unplug the surge protector. And of course it's a little cooler now, so. Normally I'd have a towel out here to wipe all this off and I completely forgot about it. This is a good opportunity to inspect your connections, make sure nothing's scarring. Looks like we're good. We learned that the hard way. All right. Now it just goes in that same bin. Once I think I'm done hooking up or, you know, disconnecting everything, I'll do a quick walk around. Um, just make sure I didn't really miss anything that needs to be packed up. Uh, also a good opportunity to look around the campsite. Uh, this is a little more our site. We're coming back here. So there's some stuff we're obviously not going to pack up like the flower thing Lauren has behind her. And a few of that and the chalks will come off when we get ready to hook up that process. But just a quick walk around also because this is a new coach to us. This is the opportunity we go to close up the toy hauler space. I cheated into this last night, so um, we went ahead and fold the stairs back up, put the Moride safety rail back, up, made sure it was secure. Uh, and yeah, it's just kind of a quick double check. Obviously, we accidentally left the awning lights on, so we got to make sure to turn those off. And just a quick walk around. The other thing too is this is where I'll go ahead and drop my cord reel. So um, I'll pull off the cord from the reel. I'm gonna come underneath here. So I'll go ahead and pull the trailer brake line off of it, get that in the clear, and then I'll go ahead and uh, start pulling off this because we will need it. And yes, the thing I didn't think we ever would need or want, that Moride Cord Keeper is amazing. Uh, it's a really inexpensive way and it rotates too, so it keeps this nice up out of the way and out of harm's way. Uh, and it can just store right there too. So it's it can stay right there for transit and we're good to go. Uh, so this is normally where we go back inside and we do a walk around. reasons we wanted to switch to a toy hauler not just for the extra room not just for uh, the separated space but also we wanted to find an RV that was easier to pack up and we didn't have to do quite as much we did this whole thing in about 30 40 minutes from really start to finish and that's with filming and so we I know we can go almost twice as fast if we just put the camera down so for me that was a big win I don't know if it was for you behind the camera or not but Outside of this, this is about it. Unfortunately, we don't have our RV door lock yet, so we'll have to get some keys. Uh, but, oh yeah, you know what helps? If I open the door, so I put the steps up. Let's open that back up. Put our more right step above steps on. Give it a little shake. Feel the crap off of it. Wake the neighbors. There. Grab some more dog hair. that in, safety rail up, and then we're ready to hook up.
So at this point, uh, we're pretty much wrapped up. We're hooked up. We're ready to roll. But mm -hmm. just like I walked through inside, now it's Lauren's turn to walk through outside. Mm -hmm. I know I didn't lock every bin up, so right. I have my keys mm -hmm. uh, that I'm going to give to her and let her go through. And I'm going to walk it with her and just double check as well. So again, mm -hmm. two sets of eyes is better than one. Absolutely. So you ready? Let's go. So hopefully everything we went through helps you out. That's just how we happen to pack up. But if you're curious on our tear down, like a checklist, we go by that. We just have it memorized at this point. Uh, and obviously it's gonna develop with the toy hauler from what we had in the fifth wheel. But, but we do have those checklists as well. So uh, in addition, we launched a, a membership option. So in one of those, or a couple of those memberships, uh, you can actually get our downloadables, which is our travel maps uh, and those checklists as well. So make sure and check that out. Just visit millersinmotion.com and then click join the family because that's what we call it. We consider everybody that joins us on this little adventure our family. So. Like he said, thank y'all for tuning in and we hope this helps you. We hope you stick around and see what kind of adventures we get up to in Tennessee. And until next time, bye mom. Thank you.